Hi everyone on this lovely Wednesday and forgive my wet hair because I was later in the sea today. It was a little choppy, it was uh, splendiferous. <laughs> that's a quest, that's a thing I like to say. It was splendiferous this morning in the sea, so wonderful. So welcome today, okay, and we are going straight into a kind of a little development of Ask Finola How, and we're looking at um, actual live questions from uh, entrepreneurs. We're not sharing who those entrepreneurs are, unless those entrepreneurs want to be shared with the world. So what we're doing is taking live questions because what's very interesting about this journey as an entrepreneur is we don't always realize that everyone is on the same journey too. It's not exactly the same journey, but it is a path and with a well-traveled path, we know that we can hit the same obstacles at the same time in the life of the entrepreneur. So I want to share some of those questions with you as we go week by week. And of course, I want to invite you to uh, DM me, PM me, whatever you want to do, to reach out and ask questions. Do it in the comments, reach out personally, directly to me. I'm so very happy to actually share anything that I can with you to help you on your path. So here is an interesting couple of questions all around the area of product market fit is what I would call it. And it's kind of the theme for this month, but that's not what you would call it. You would call it in these questions. And let me share with you three questions which are around the same area um, that will help you. And I wanna see if it resonates with you and your path, okay? Here's the questions. How do I know? Oh yeah, sorry. This is Ask Fanola How, episode 12. And the overall question is, how do I know there's a market for what I do and if my product or service is the right one, okay? And it is in specifically what was asked by live entrepreneurs and it's often, the clues are often in how the question is asked and what I know about that business. So forgive me as I try to share with you the insights that I can gain without revealing anybody, okay? So it's how do I know there's a market for what I do is my product or service the right one? And is what I do filling a gap or have I got it wrong, okay? So what this tells me, because the most obvious answer here is to say, well, have you done the research? And I could then hang up on you today by just saying, well, have you done the research? Have you actually gone out, identified the customer, profiled the customer and all of that jazz? And we've covered that in Ask Finola How on several occasions that you really need to understand What's your purpose here? What is the um, need that you saw in the marketplace? The customer that you're trying to serve? Have you profiled them? Are you, are you where they are? All of those really good questions. But this is the piece that I want you to go deeper on. Because when those questions are asked, and often they can be asked in uh, groups or communities that you're part of, and often it can be asked, it's when doubt sits in. That's actually when this question is asked most. It's when doubt sits in. Because perhaps you've tried for a while and it's not really kicking. You've served a few people, you've sold a few things, and then you start to doubt because you did do the research at the start. Now, caveat here, make sure you do the research. Make sure there's enough of a market for what you do or it will not work. Because we also, apart from fulfilling our purpose, we also have a profit motive. So we have to make a living to feed our families. We have to do more than that. We have to be abundant in attracting our own success so that we can do more good in the world, okay? So, so make sure you have a market for it. If you're not sure how to do market research, comment below or ask a question and I will dedicate a whole issue, a whole episode to market research. The piece that I kind of want to uh, share with you now is this idea of doubt when doubt creeps in because you've tried for a while and then now you're no longer sure and you're doing all the things that everybody says you should be doing which is you're on Instagram you're on LinkedIn you are in social media everywhere and you are doing these great landing pages and you're busy 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 and the danger often is get so busy that we don't hear what the market is telling us. Apologies for that. When we're so busy as entrepreneurs because we like to focus on what's 
being done and doing and delivering and our passion is moving us along on the path we often don't take time to pause and see what is working so two questions one is have you done the research and the next part of that is have you listened to what it told you or did you do the research in a way that you tried to make sure that it would give you the answers that you wanted it to give you not the answers that you actually wanted to hear in our busyness as entrepreneurs, we often forget to take a pause, to take a pause to hear and make sure that we are hearing what the market is telling us. And if we are too busy in our own minds and too busy telling what we want to say to the market, we can't hear the other voices. And it's the voices that tell us where we are on our navigation point. How does that product fit that market? Is it that you heard that the, there was a need in the market. You answered that need with the product that you built, that you believed in, but didn't wait to see what they thought. Didn't wait to see what they anticipated that you didn't anticipate. That when they actually physically tried to use the product or when they tried to buy that service from you, something wasn't quite right. And too often we are so loud in our own busyness and trying to do all the things that everyone is telling us to do by being active in social media and everywhere else, that we don't hear the whispers. And they're so soft because we're so loud that we don't hear what it's telling us. We don't hear that actually that price point is wrong. Actually, you know, me as this type of customer can't afford that. But this other customer over here could afford that. Or they want a little more or they want a little less. There's a point after the market research that we really have to listen because if we don't listen, then we start to look around and then we get doubt and we ask total strangers, do you think there's a market for my product? When the person that you should be asking is your own customer and when you ask your own customer and it's make sure that you profile them and you go where they are so that you can really make sure, yes, I'm in the right space, but maybe if I tweak this here or that here, then it will work, okay? The other thing around doubt is often, as an entre just to follow up on that, because once you've got that sorted, I want to focus in on this other angle for you. Very often, the energy that it takes to establish the product, to actually build it out, to establish the service, to establish, to set up your website, to do your social media, to do all of that is exhausting. And again, it takes time, you need time to take that breath. Because very often, when I've seen over the years is, people are exhausted after that first big push. They're exhausted and don't have the energy to push it the rest of the way. So it's like this kind of idea as well, that you have to pace yourself on this journey. The first leg of the work is the strategic positioning. It's positioning to make sure I have the right customer. I have, I know there's a market for this. I know there is a need. I've built this product. And then you can get to a point in your business where you just give up. Or there's another scenario, which is that you think you hear the marketplace saying the product's not right. So you build another product and you go down this road of portfolio building constantly creating new products or services, tweaking new products or services and never serving and helping implement and harvest the work of the previous product that you've released. So there is a recognition that there is a path to getting a product to market and there is an energy level required to get you across the line. And in each of these stages, we must take a breath, make sure it's bedded in before we move on before we make assumptions that this, that there is no market for this. So many people give up at what they call the 50 yard line, where they're just there and they run out of steam, or they're just there and they build another product because it's shinier. It is about staying the course, about hearing what the market is telling you, about adjusting the course so that you are truer and truer and truer for your customer the more that you go. It is the eternal tweak, the eternal adjustment, and actually adding an engine to get it across the line. Know the phases of the journey. 
if you know the phases of the journey, then then you will have success. That's really it. You are always listening, serving your customer in the best way that you can, but building an engine that allows it to get across the line. So it's not always as simple as, is there a market for the product or is there a market for this service? It is about prove there's a market, connect with your customer. Don't ever keep your customer at arm's length. The closer you are to your customer, the more information they can share with you and help you course correct as you grow. The other piece, again, about not giving up at the 50 yard line, the other piece has to be about make sure you build that engine to help you grow the distance, to help you go the distance. And here's a little analogy for you. As you know, I am swimming at the moment and getting lessons to actually help my technique. And that was very interesting because last week we were taught about our feet, okay? So how to use your legs. You know, I was thinking, kick your legs as, you know, as, as hard as you can and all of this. So up until now, we focused on breathing and, you know, the top half of the body. And it's like when we start the business, we think about identity, we think about our purpose, we think about our passion, and it's our arms and it's our mind and it's all up here. After that, you need the legs, you need the engine to drive you. And that engine helps you go the distance. And this was my realization from my swimming this week, which was my challenge has always been making sure I can get the distance in and then learning about kicking your legs so that it's like a little outboard motor on the end of your body. And you are not kicking too high, you're not kicking too hard. You're kicking fast in small little movements, but very, very fast. And actually you can change the speed depending on what your objective is. And that's also a really nice analogy. But what I realized was, okay, so if I have my legs floppy like this and I make them go as fast as I can, I've built an engine. And every single time since I learned that on Saturday, I'm going further and faster. My breath is lasting longer. I'm getting somewhere. If you don't have an engine, a marketing engine for your business, then it won't work. And you will be asking those questions of, is my product right for the market? Because nothing seems to be happening. Nothing will happen without the engine to push it. Yes, verify you have a market, verify there is a customer and there is enough of them. But then you must take a breath because you need stamina and attach the engine and it'll work. This is Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How. I hope you enjoyed that one. We have more next week. We're talking about pricing. Okay, let me know how you get on and leave some comments below or leave some questions so that I can help serve you better. Have a wonderful day.